is up my fellow gamers in today's video where this is our best gear guide like it's up for more amazing gaming content this is kind of like my checklist when it comes to which gear you should equip on your character first number one priority should always be the highest rarity whatever your highest rarity gear is prioritize that over everything else the second checklist is going to be does the main stat match this specific character's class type so what i mean by that is we have asta right here clover academy version he is an attacker and he focuses strictly on the attack stat you'll see that he has no magic attack at all so because of that we want to put the highest rarity gear which is for me is going to be ur right now and then we want to prioritize looking for gear that has attack as its main stat now i do have one that unfortunately this one doesn't have attack it has defense but for the most part you'll see that a lot of these ones have attack as that main stat and then your third final part of the checklist is to go ahead and try and get those set bonuses set bonuses is really end game stuff and before we go on to our next tip we got to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for this video Video, Dungeon Hunter 6. It is an awesome game that I've actually already covered on my YouTube channel. Dungeon Hunter 6 is a free to play MMORPG game that has a unique hero collecting feature that all takes place in a beautiful fantasy style world. The gameplay is fast paced with hack and slash combat styles and the game lets you experience various builds and skills with the different classes. It's absolutely free to play and you can download it now using the link in the description box below or scan the QR code if you are viewing from a PC. Dungeon Hunter 6 delivers a huge immersive multiplayer experience. The game has stunning skill animations. You can customize your outfits and your mounts so you can really stay stand out from the crowd. You can engage in intense guild war battles or even epic boss raids with friends. In Dungeon Hunter 6, you make the bosses work for you. This game features a unique gotcha system that not only lets you loot and ride the bosses that you summon, but you can have up to three of them out on the battlefield at once. And these boss monsters can follow you around and assist you in combat with amazing combo skills. Dungeon Hunter 6 is having a huge huge update right now in December there are six classes and over a hundred uniquely designed bosses that you can conquer and explore with check out the latest class the shaman that was just released for the holiday season download the game now for free on Android and iOS devices use my link in the description box below or scan the QR code if you are viewing from a PC you can also get a special starter pack that is is worth $50 by using my link down below as well. It's going to get you 10 summoning scrolls, one SSR Lieutenant, the Demonic Wolf, along with one accessory pack to help start your journey. Thanks to Dungeon Hunter 6 for sponsoring this video. Now, as far as which dungeon you should go ahead and farm first for gear, it's typically always going to be the dungeon power gear, which is the red icon. And that is just because this has the most universal gear sets and it prioritizes attack power, whether it's attack or magic attack. And that's honestly going to be the most important thing early on. And you can pretty much put those gear sets on any type of character. These other ones like the dungeon technique and the dungeon sensei, these are kind of more niches. They got some gear sets for your tank to increase their defense, some for like crit rate and crit damage, but really the dungeon power one, you're gonna get the attack set and you're also gonna get the speed set, which are two of the strongest gear sets in this game. And the easiest way to start getting to level 15, even just to get to level 13, so that you can start farming up those LR gear pieces is make sure you use an all mono color team. So what I mean by that is for this red dungeon, you wanna use all blue characters. Infinity buff in this game is insanely strong. You don't need to have the top SSR heroes in this game. You can go ahead and just use SR heroes 
As long as you have a team of all blues, you'll be able to dominate and you don't need to have the recommended power either. Even if your power is only like showing 150,000 and it's recommending you have like 180,000, it doesn't matter. The affinity counter power is so tremendous that it's going to increase the amount of damage you deal and it's going to reduce the damage your team takes. As far as how many gear pieces you can fit onto your grid, this is the highest amount I've been able to get onto one of my characters. You see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different pieces of gear and this completely fills every single tiny grid piece there is no space left now with this we can do a couple of different things when it comes to end game starting to worry a little bit more about our gear sets and that is we could go three different gear sets at two pieces or we can just go one gear set at four piece and then another one at a two piece when you're in that mid game area just having one or two set bonuses is efficient enough but when you do get to that late, late end game and you ever do get to a point where you're completely stuck on levels and you feel like you're just not progressing, that's when you wanna just take a look at your gear and try and get three set bonuses at two each. The set bonuses do play a bigger part in that end game. All of the main stats are always flat for the regular pieces of gear. I have not come across any stats that have been a percentage as the main stat. The only percentage rolls I've seen are on those substats, and that's gonna be very important when you are upgrading your gear. You wanna look out for those percentage rolls for your substats, because they are going to scale with your character. So as your character levels up and gets stronger and their stats increase from other variables, it's just gonna make that percentage increase the overall stat much more. Now I would say the most important part about the gear though is the artifacts. I would say the artifacts is where you're gonna see a huge, huge power increase. In fact, I would prioritize farming and trying to get a full set of artifacts on your LR characters as fast as possible. I would almost say that artifacts are more important than gear, and that is because the artifacts, they have a main stat percentage. In fact, all of them pretty much do. You'll see that this one has a defense main stat and it is a percentage base, 13.8%. And then if we take a look at this one, we got a crit rate percentage, we've got defense percentage, and then we got a crit damage percentage. Now the way the gear works with leveling up is depending on the rarity of the gear, you will be able to level it up more and you'll also unlock more substats for it. So if we take a look at a piece of UR gear, you'll see that we can take one of these to level eight if we do the upgrade. Max level is plus eight and we have three substats on these. Then every time we upgrade it by increments of four, we're gonna unlock those additional substats. You'll see plus four upgrades, we'll get that second substat. And then once we get it to the max level plus eight, we'll get that third substat. We go down a little bit further, SSRs is the same where we have three substats. And then if we take a look at the SRs, however, the SRs, they only have two substats and the max level for an SR is only plus four. When it comes to upgrading our substats, you're gonna need these enchantment stones and each enchantment stone is going to have to do with the type of stat that's being upgraded. We have our HP substat that we wanna upgrade. So we're gonna need one of these green heart icon substats. So from there, it'll show you a number. So this one shows you a one with a squiggly line to 84. What this means is once we upgrade this, an extra bonus stat, between one and 84. Let's go ahead and let's enchant this just for demonstration purposes. We got a plus 42, which isn't bad. Now we can go ahead and if we had another one, we could roll again and it can never go down from what this is. So what I mean by that is if we re-roll again and try and upgrade this, the lowest it can be is 42 and then it'll show you a higher threshold. You kind of want to always constantly keep upgrading it until you get to that higher number. But again, you want to only do this on really good pieces of gear that you're going to keep and you know you're going to use. Don't waste these materials on junk gear like these SRs or these SSR pieces of gear because they're not going to last. And these materials, they are somewhat hard to come by. Farming gear is one thing that you're gonna do endlessly in this game, and you're gonna come across tons and tons of different pieces of gear with different stats, and you're always gonna find one that's better than the other. As far as stats that are gonna give you the biggest increase to your power, 
You want to look out for stuff like crit rate, crit damage, crit res, endurance, damage res, all of these other stats at the bottom, they play a bigger role when it comes to your overall power as opposed to something like your attack and magic attack or even defense as well. HP is another one that I noticed that can really increase your overall power a lot too. Out of all the stats though, speed is going to be the most important because speed determines the turn order and the higher your speed, the sooner your character character will go in turn order so you always always want to prioritize speed over everything that is it i hope you guys and girls enjoyed the video stay happy stay safe and i'll see y'all later peace